friends say you've got to spice things up. And they're right, of course. That's what you do when your sexual relationship goes stale. The problem is we were trying to conceive. And I was like, well, what if we get all kinky, but then we end up making a baby, you know? I mean, uh, I've got to look this kid in the eye. <laughs> I don't want to stoop to such depth that I can't look a little three-year-old girl in the face when she asks me where babies come from, you know? Oh, you want to know? All right, pull up a pew. I'll tell you the story of the birds and the bees. When a man and a woman love each other very much, they get bored quite quickly. <laughs> So begins an arms race of filth. It's a, it's a race to the gutter. There are no winners. And, uh, well, like any drug, your tolerance just builds up over time. So you've got to keep pushing yourself further and further to reach the same level. Anyway, long story short, your mother put my balls in a clamp, took a shit on my chest, and nine months later... You see that hook in your nursery where the, the mobile comes down with the fluffy... Well, that's where your mother would hang me up like a halal goat. And I'd be spinning there like this, and she'd be shoving a rubber fist up my arse. And we're about a month away from IVF at this point, but she kept plugging away. And... Well, that's why you're called Peggy, of course, because it was hard. You understand that one, old boy? <laughs> You've lived. You've lived. <laughs> Hard to spice things up, given the circumstances, wasn't it? Suggested we do a bit of role play. Asked my wife to dress up as a sexy nurse, but the pandemic's ruined that. <laughs> the amount of PPE she was wearing. <laughs> it's like trying to fuck a beekeeper, you yeah. <laughs> Put more clothes on. <laughs> the other problem is that, like everyone in lockdown, we've got a dog, right? And the dog is not trained, the dog does not sleep on the dog bed. No, the dog sleep on the human bed. Does the dog sleep at the end of the bed? No! Somehow we've ended up with a dog that sleeps on the fucking pillow, right? <laughs> so I've got to have sex with a dog's face staring at me. Imagine, just trying enough to come as it is. There's a dog there, sniffing, always sniffing. Imagine, imagine trying to have sex with a dog's face just there. I don't know what you're thinking, why'd you marry her? But, the, hey, hey, it's my wife, God damn it! I'll say what I like. <laughs> don't get me wrong, I like my wife. I love that dog. I love that dog. When you're middle class as I am and you get a dog, you get asked these questions. People, your middle class friends, you go, you got a dog? Oh, that's lovely, that's a good thing, isn't it? Is it a, is it a rescue? <laughs> Presumably you didn't even pay for a puppy. It's a rescue, is it a rescue? You're a rescue dog. No, I've got money <laughs> and I want a pet. I don't want a fucking Vietnam veteran in my house. I want to throw him the ball and have him bring him back, not think it's a fucking grenade. <laughs> Can't walk him through the long grass, keeps having flashbacks to Da Nang or whatever. <laughs> want to come home and he's jumping up, pleased to see me wagging his tail. You don't just come home to a silent flat. Oh, where's the dog? <laughs> it's just in the living room in an armchair with the blinds drawn, drinking scotch. We lost a lot of good boys that day. <laughs> but eventually, after months of fucking, the wife, this is, not the dog, the, um, although she was there, the dog was there, in my eye line. <laughs> and after months chipping away at the coal face, we did eventually conceive, I impregnated the fortress an achievement which I think should at least count towards my Duke of Edinburgh award. Um, it's a badge or something, but... I tell you, having a pregnant wife changes the dynamic of the marriage, because your job as a husband is to support the wife. And uh, before this, maybe she'd have a day where she woke up low self-esteem, she'd wake up, look in the mirror and go, oh, I'm worried I look fat today. And I'd go, I hadn't noticed that, I think you look beautiful. 
you know, job is to support the wife. But then she became pregnant. She started comparing herself to her friends who were also pregnant. And a few months ago, she called me and she said, Finn, come and look at me. I'm worried I'm not fat enough. Oh, curveball. <laughs> That's what I call a lose-lose situation. <laughs> hey, fellas. It's a cunning female trap. How am I meant to answer that question? I'm worried I'm not fat enough. Nah, look at you, you're a fucking disgrace. What are you talking about? We had to cut you out of your shoes this morning, do you know what I mean? 